Hi, I'm Ashton, and this is a bad angle. Hi, I'm Ashton, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about the safety behind chest binding. Um, I've made a video on kind of binding 101 in the past, but it was over a year ago. I had terrible voice cracks, and the audio in that video is absolutely abhorrent, so I am making this one more focused on the safety of binding and how to bind safely without hurting yourself, all those good things. There's not really much of a necessary intro to this, so I'm just gonna get going. First, I wanna go over who can bind, because I actually get a lot of questions like, hey, I'm blank, is it safe for me to bind? Or, hey, I'm blank, is it okay for me to bind? Um, so I wanted to go over a few things. One, disabilities. Depending on your disability, you can definitely bind or you cannot bind. Personally, I have costochondritis and I have a lot of sensory processing issues, but I still managed to bind relatively safely, and even when my costochondritis flared up, I was able to take breaks and make sure that I was staying healthy and staying safe, regardless of my costo. But your disabilities may affect you, and you might want to consider binding for less time or shorter intervals of time. As I'll get into later in this video, the most important thing is listening to your body, and if something hurts, stop doing it. Just be mindful of how it's impacting your body and talk to a doctor if you need to. Second, size. A lot of people have also asked me, I'm chubby, can I bind? Yes. Your size isn't going to stop you from binding. As long as you're binding safely, and as long as you have a properly fitting binder, then you should be okay. The only issue here would be finding a properly fitting binder, because not every brand does offer size-inclusive binders. Shapeshifters binders, while they're a little bit expensive, have a lot of fun patterns, and they cater to the plus-size community. For example, one of the sizing guides on their website shows this image. Look at that cute tummy! I love it! <laughs> GC2B is also a really well-known company that makes binders, and their binders go up to size 5XL, and they also come in a relatively wide range of skin tones as opposed to my color. I believe that GC2B also offers custom sizing through their support email, so if you do need a different size, then you can email them as well. There's so many options! The third one that I've gotten questions about is age. I'm 13, can I bind? I'm 40, can I bind? Yes and yes. I get a lot of comments from younger people asking how they can convince their parents to let them bind, and this is definitely one way that you can do that. When I first asked my parents to bind, one of their biggest concerns was safety, and I feel like that may be the same for a lot of you. One way that I was able to actually convince my parents to let me bind was making sure that they knew that I knew how to bind safely by telling them about the incremental thing that you can do when you start binding, telling them about stretches, telling them about all the things that I'm about to tell you. If your parents are worried about you binding because of your safety, then this is something that could help you as well. Making sure that your parents know that you know how to properly take care of yourself and properly bind can help encourage them to allow you to bind. Again, as long as you have a binder that fits you and you're binding safely, there shouldn't be an issue. Even if you're 13 and you're still a growing human, as long as you make sure that your binders fit you and don't get too small as you continue to grow, then you'll be okay. Finally, gender reasons. I've gotten questions like, I'm only genderqueer, I'm not a trans man, can I bind? Yes, there's no way of like appropriating binding. It doesn't matter if you're intersex or AFAB or AMAB, if you feel like binding and if it's something that would help you, then go for it. Supporting companies like Shapeshifters and GC2B is good. It, it helps the whole trans community by helping those companies stay on their feet. And it doesn't matter if you're not a binary trans man, if binding would help you out, then it's okay to bind. Finally, before I get on to the safety, why should you bind safely? I have seen a lot of trans folks saying that they bind unsafely because it helps them get flatter or because it helps their dysphoria, but it's important to keep in mind that the long run tissue damage can disqualify you from top surgery. You may end up with a severe case of costochondritis or rib damage that won't allow you to bind in the future, and just for your own long-term health, binding safely is the best option. I know it can be expensive, and I know it can be painful to have to deal with dysphoria when you aren't able to bind, but it's better than hurting yourself in the long run. It's incredibly important to safely bind, and that's why I'm making this video. Wow, full circle, I'm so intelligent. <laughs> the next thing I wanna talk about is materials. Where do you look for a binder? What types of binders are good and which ones aren't? The first thing is the big no-nos, ace bandages. I know, I know you've probably seen people binding with ace bandages. Don't do it, it's not good. I know it's a common thing in pop culture to see like that transgender montage where a boy like shaves his hair off and binds his breasts down with ace bandages and like puts on a snapback and he's like, I'm a man now, but don't bind with ace bandages. Ace bandages are designed for injuries. They're designed to get tighter as you move. You do not want something around your chest slowly getting tighter as you move throughout the day. That will crack your ribs. Ace bandages are very dangerous to bind with. Do not use them. I know you saw Ruby Rose doing it. Don't do it. I'm gonna close my window because I feel like this lighting is... Is that lighting better? Is this worse? 
I'm so bad at making videos. Next is KT tape. I've seen a lot of debate around KT tape, but I believe the general consensus is it's probably not the best. KT tape can really irritate your skin. Even the company Trans Tape that makes tape specifically for binding, their tape is literally just KT tape. Taking on and off and on and off tape like KT tape can really irritate your skin. It's not healthy. And even if you cover up your nipples and more sensitive parts of your chest, it can really harm you. I'm not going to say you shouldn't bind with KT tape, but I would advise against it. I never attempted it. I was a D cup and my chest was definitely too big to try KT tape. But generally, I would advise against using KT tape. And if you do, please do your proper amount of research. I'm not the person to come to. Next, binders from cheaper sites, sites like Amazon or eBay or the like wholesale sites from China. I would also highly recommend against these. People do use binders from Amazon, it's not impossible, but they aren't created by trans people, they aren't meant for trans people, and often the sizing can be very off. I would recommend that you invest money in a GC2B binder or a shapeshifters binder, as opposed to getting one from Amazon that could hurt you. Editing asked and chiming in to say, also a lot of the like cheaper binders from Amazon and such will advertise themselves as like lesbian, tomboy apparel, screenshots here, and it's just not like, it's clearly not made for trans people or for long-term wear when it's advertised like that. So just like a heads up, that's probably a red flag and I would probably avoid buying a binder that is like presented that way. You can't see, but I'm making a thumbs up. <laughs> I wouldn't use Amazon to get binders. I would instead support companies like DCTV and shapeshifters that are run by trans people for trans people. Kind of like KT Tape, I never used a binder from Amazon, but I wouldn't recommend it. And I would highly advise that you stay away from that. So if you can't use any of those things, where should you get binders? As I've mentioned, GC Doobie is great. They were my favorite. I also used Underworks, but it wasn't comfortable for me because of the way my body's built. But a lot of people really do like Underworks. The only thing to keep in mind with them is that they aren't run by trans people. And personally, I prefer to support companies that provide binders that are run by trans people. Shapeshifters is run by trans people. And I am going to create a list in the description of all of the binder companies that I can find that are run by or managed by transgender and genderqueer and non-binary people um, for your shopping pleasure. <laughs> All right, next section, starting to bind, beginning to bind, getting on your binder. What do you do? The first and most important thing is to get the right size. You do not want to size down in a binder. It can destroy your tissue. It can crack your ribs. It's not going to be a good time. You may think it'll make your chest flatter, but in the end, it'll really just hurt you overall. You don't want to do it. If you're right on the cusp of sizes or in between them, I would recommend going for the size above. I'm not going to tell you how to size a binder because it is different for each company, but depending on where you decide to get a binder from, they should have a very well put together page on how to size your binder and a chart for which size you should get based on your measurements. If they don't have something like that, then that's probably a red flag. My second piece of advice for when you start to bind is to ease into it. Don't go straight into wearing it for eight hours. For me, I went with half an hour at first, then one hour, then two hours, and I did that over a span of weeks so that my body could get used to wearing a binder. This isn't something that's required. You can probably bind safely without it, but it is something, again, that I would highly recommend. Easing your body into something new like binding is going to be a lot easier for you and a lot healthier than just jumping straight into doing it for multiple hours on end. Most importantly, again, I'm going to stress that you should listen to your body. There's a rule that's passed around a lot that's like, don't bind over eight hours. Um, I bound a lot over eight hours because my school day is eight hours and I had to get to and from school. That being said, if you can bind for less than eight hours at a time, try doing that. But if you need to go over the eight hours, it's not going to ruin you. Just make sure that you're listening to your body and as soon as something feels wrong, take a break. Editing Ashton again, I'm not saying you should bind over eight hours. I'm simply saying that I know that binding over eight hours is the unfortunate reality for a lot of people. Like a lot of us don't have a choice. So if you're going to bind over eight hours, you may as well do it safely as possible. I would recommend taking a sports bra with you wherever you need to go if you're binding for more than eight hours, just to make sure that you have a backup plan. It's not worth hurting your body just to have a flat chest for a couple more hours. I would say listen less to the time limits that people put online and listen more to how your body responds to being in a binder and to how your ribs feel and how your chest feels and just make sure that you are comfortable before listening to the guidelines of eight hours, six hours, 12 hours. I would focus more on how it feels for you. 
not necessarily related to safety, but also keep in mind that it can take a while to get used to getting in and out of a binder. It can be difficult, it can take you like 10-20 minutes the first time you try. Don't be discouraged if you're having a difficult time getting into a binder. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have the wrong size, it might just mean that it takes a bit more practice than you thought it would, and that's okay. Also, the proper way of positioning your chest under a binder can be important for looking flat. So what I did and what was recommended to me by my doctor was to push your chest down, not up and out, which is something that I used to do before it was advised otherwise. Pushing my chest down ended up being the most comfortable for me, and that's what I would recommend. The final thing that I want to talk about is binding long term. How do you continue to safely bind when you're doing it for months or years? What are some things you should avoid when you're binding long term? What are some things that you should do? First, something that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you need to change sizes, do so. Everybody's body changes. You might gain weight, you might lose weight, you might get taller, you might, well, you're probably not going to get shorter, but you never know. So make sure you stay aware of how your binder fits you, and if you need to go up a size, go down a size, or if you've had a binder for so long that it's wearing out and you need a new one in the same size, keep that in mind. It's definitely more important to realize when your binder gets too small for you because that can definitely hurt you more than a too large binder would, but just either way, keep it in mind. Make sure to kind of monitor how your binder fits on you, and if you need one that fits better, then get one that fits better. Another thing to remember is that you should always be able to breathe. If you're wearing a binder that you can't take a full deep breath in, then it's too tight. Keep that in mind. Try that with every binder that you wear. If you cannot breathe in your binder, it is not safe. Another rule that you'll hear a lot that is actually really, really important is don't fucking sleep in your binder. You will wake up and your whole ass body will be sore, okay? It's a mistake I've made before once. I learned my lesson. Would not recommend. Don't sleep in a binder. It will hurt you. If you accidentally fall asleep in a binder for like 10 minutes, you'll be fine, but please do not wear it overnight, as tempting as it can be. Don't do it. Another thing that you might run into is exercise. Are you in a gym class? Do you do marching band? Are you in a running club? I would recommend not exercising with a binder on specifically because it is around your ribs and your lungs, which you kind of need when you're exercising. That said, a lot of companies say that if you size up one, then it's more safe to exercise in and you can even swim in a binder that is one size above your own. So if you have a binder that's a little bit too big, then it might be okay to exercise in. Look at my dog. Oh, hi, Bo. I love you. <laughs> But if you can avoid exercising with a binder on, that is probably safer. But like every other rule that comes along with binding, by far the most important thing is to listen to your body. If you are wearing a binder one size too big and you're running in it or you're swimming in it and you find yourself not able to breathe, then take it off. Even if something is deemed okay within the rules of binding and it hurts you, then it's not okay for you. Take it off. Treat yourself properly. Take care of yourself. Another good thing to keep in mind with long-term binding is stretch. Oh my god. If you're in a binder for a while, it can really, really help to stretch. Even smaller stretches. Pull your shoulders back like this. Put your arms over your head and lean them back as far- I can't really do that right now because I had surgery recently, but put your arms above your head and like push them behind your shoulders as much as you can. Do the- do this one. This one's great when you're binding. Any kind of stretch that loosens up your upper body or your shoulders can really, really help. Don't stretch so far that you're hurting yourself, but keep in mind that keeping your upper body loose will allow you to bind longer and safer, and it's- it's good for you. Stretching isn't gonna hurt. Try it out. Find a stretch that really makes you feel good when you're binding. Also make sure to stretch when you take off your binder to reacclimate your body to not having that surrounding you. My voice will not stop cracking. I would also recommend taking a break every once in a while, especially if you're wearing a binder every day. Try to not wear one on the weekends or if you have a day off from work or school. And if you do need to go out without a binder on, I would recommend sweatshirts. Nobody will ever know you have a chest. It's a miracle. I know it can be tough to convince yourself to take a break because dysphoria sucks, man. I get it. But remember that in the long run, your health is so, so important. Even if you don't want top surgery in the future, it's important to keep your chest healthy so that you can continue binding for as long as you need to. Remind yourself that taking care of yourself should be your top priority, and if your dysphoria is bad, you can figure out other ways of relieving it, like wearing a sweatshirt or layering shirts, or wearing a sports bra, which is far less tight than any binder is. Anyways, that's my basic overview of how to bind safely, listen to your body, get the correct size, don't bind for too long. I hope this helps someone. I hope if you were looking for advice on how to bind safely or how to begin to bind, then this helped you out. So that's all the advice I have. Remember to take care of yourselves. Goodbye. I love you. Remember to listen to your body, and I will talk to you later, maybe.